Today is the final day of Lisa's advanced open water certification. She has to do her first of two deep dives, going all the way down to 100 feet under the ocean, all while utilizing her gauge and dive computer thing. And also getting to see some cool color changes in deep water all the while. She also gets to see a Royal Thai sunken World War II battleship. Seeing all of that has been amazing, but as always, the best part is getting to meet and spend time with all these amazing people while doing something adventurous and kind of scary altogether. After the rush of getting your gear packed up, going on a long tail boat, and setting up your gear once you actually make it to the boat, I find that scuba diving is a generally very reflective and meditative activity. It's one of the very few times when you can't possibly be interrupted, it's just you, the sound of your breath and the beauty surrounding you as you float away mostly effortlessly. Since we've had four days of non-stop diving meditation, the thing that strikes me most as we float along is just how much Koh Tao has changed since the last time I was here. It was about four years ago and was very much the scuba dive all day, party all night destination that it's always been. <laughs> Filled with people from quite literally all over the planet, this little island in the Gulf of Thailand felt very different back then as compared to now. It's not worse or better, just different. How was your day of diving? Oh man. It was a three-act narrative like Josh would say. It started off a little trepid, a little, little nervous and anxious and then you know went higher and was good. Then by the second dive I was feeling my nerves and scariness. And then by the third, which is now, I'm feeling famished, ready to eat, and ready to dive for the night dive. So this night dive that we're about to go on is uh is pretty cool. You basically just, you know, Walk right in the ocean. Okay, so then we're going to swim out. Now the swim is going to be a little bit, 10 minute swim. We need to go out to the deeper line. The dive is going to start just before sunset and then we're going to finish up at around 8 p.m. maybe? Something like that? Yeah. So we'll be under for a while. It's going to be a very shallow dive, I'd guess, since we're just walking right in, but I think it'll be a cool one. Night cat for our night dive. Don't worry, we can see you under the water with our swims. I know that, sir. <laughs> it's just surprisingly very challenging. Yeah, it's a bit of a walk down the steps, huh? A relaxed island vibe of mostly people staying for a few months at a time has replaced the endless stream of short-stay backpackers who would come here to get scuba certified and go on a bar crawl every single night. Where there was once hundreds of divers at each dive site in groups of 10 or more, you can now get one-on-one -on -one personal lessons from the literal best of the best dive masters at dive sites filled to the brim with coral and sea life coming back to life before your very eyes. For some, us included, right now is the actual best time there has ever been to come to Koh Tao. How was your night dive? <sighs> that was so cool. What a, it was the best way to end the evening and the best way to end these last three days. I was feeling, like I said, that three act narrative, nervous, like felt like I was gonna crash. And then the night dive was the perfect way to end it. It was such a calm and beautiful swim out and then we just got to see the coolest animals and creatures at night, all kind of hiding, 
but also exploring. We saw a cool stingray that was purple, blue, and yellow. I've never seen a stingray that color, even though I'm so wiped and so exhausted. It was, it was the best. It was the best. There's a sort of beautiful resilience to Koh Tao. This island that relies almost exclusively on tourism hasn't seen any real amount of tourists for just about two years. Then COVID hit, so there was no people there. So all us guys, we've been busy out there building our own little reef, doing an eco project, a coral restoration projects. But the biggest, the biggest, the biggest problem has just been, what's my business doing? Are we going to yeah, get right. through this? When's it going to open again? Yeah. Are we ever going to earn money again? Are the international travelers going to come back? But I would say Kotal's pretty tough at getting through. We've had floods and we've gone through scenarios before and got through them. And I'll just say this is another one. It's not the same as it was. And honestly, it may never go back to the party focused island it once was. But that might not be the worst thing for Koh Tao in the long run. If you, if you arrive right now, you, you're going to get private instructors. You're going to have no people on the dive boat. You're going to have beaches to yourselves. It's, you're going to get a lot more care and attention. It's, it's starting up. You, you will have to take a, turn a blind eye to every third shop being closed. Or, you know, out of five resorts, one's not open. Or you walk along the beach and not everywhere is open. But the places that are open, I would say you get the unique opportunity of seeing Thailand when it is not so busy. Honestly, we feel like this might be the best version of Koh Tao. We'll be back, for sure. Congratulations on being advanced open water. I don't even know what that means, but I know what it means, wait. It means you can go super I deep. A, I get a new card now. And you can go down to 30 meters. I should know that, 18. 30 meters. 30 meters and 60 feet, right? Nope, 30 meters and almost 100 feet. 30 meters and 100 feet, I studied. Me. It's me. Hi, kitty. What do you got to tell us? So many things to say.